What's up, YouTube? Uh, welcome back to another episode. Uh, today, we are just going to run through raw plastic bumper covers. I have this uh, QX56 Infinity raw plastic bumper. I have the top cap, lower cap, and then just a trim section back there that I need to spray up. Um, and I'm going to run through kind of the process that I take when it comes to spraying these and ensuring that my paint sticks to them because we've all seen the videos. Uh, where you hit it with an air hose or a pin blower like this and the paint just flies off So I'm going to show you guys how to avoid that completely and make sure that your paint sticks um, And kind of run through the products that I'm going to use to do this job um, And talk about what you actually have to do as far as prepping these goes All right, so let's talk about how you should prep these because there is a lot of people that automatically assume that you need to scuff these. As you can see, I have scuffed this with gray scotch Bright and water um, and a little bit of Dawn dish soap. Now scuffing is actually not even necessary. It's just a really good way to clean these parts. So it's, it's a good practice to scuff them, but it's actually not necessary because believe it or not, these raw plastic bumper covers rely pretty much 100% on plastic adhesion promoter to make paint stick to them. As long as you clean them extremely well with a pretty aggressive uh, waterborne cleaner, you're going to make the paint stick. So a little trick for the people at home, you can go to any paint supply house and ask for a scuffing paste. That's, that in gray scotch Bright is going to clean this in the correct way to where you get all that mold release that's on these raw plastic bumpers off Wipe it down, clean it down, tack rag it, adhesion promote it, you're good to go. Now, my process with this is I use basically just a drop or two of Dawn dish soap in a bucket of water with gray scotch Bright, and I just go through and clean the whole outside area. I get it all blown off and dried, then I wheel it into the spray booth, and then for me, this is just the bottle, but I use an alcohol-based cleaner. And literally when you go to spray this to clean this panel, you want to pretty much saturate this bumper cover. That's going to help clean this the best. You get all of that mold release agent off. And I'll, I'll show you here in just a second. I'm gonna go grab a towel and I'll show you how I go about cleaning these. Okay, so I got my microfiber towel. And like I said, guys, this is just this extra spray bottle that I had laying around, but this is SC159 anti-static cleaner, or it's basically just an alcohol-based cleaner. But when you go to clean this, you want to saturate it. I mean, every nook and cranny, get it all soaked. And the reason I use an alcohol-based cleaner is it evaporates. It's not going to pool and have any kind of liquid left behind. It will evaporate as soon as I hit it with air. So, go through it, clean this up really good, wipe it down. And the nice thing about an alcohol-based cleaner is it also helps to reduce static, which static on plastic can attract dust and dirt and just make for kind of a nasty paint job. It's never fun. The same process like on fiberglass parts, it's really good to use an alcohol-based cleaner because you do want to reduce as much static as you possibly can. I also have another solution for that that I'll show you when I go to actually spray adhesion promoter on this. Same thing with up here and right there. But you really, you just want to saturate everything and get this extremely clean before you go and do anything else because that mold release agent is exactly why paint likes to peel off of these is they, they weren't cleaned properly and they weren't adhesion promoted properly. I will show you as well how to do that. And you have a couple of options. You can use uh, adhesion promoter in a can uh, what I'm going to use is out of a spray gun, and I'm going to use a mini gun for that. I personally like it out of a spray gun because the droplets aren't as chunky as with a rattle can. But you could get it done with a rattle can, no problem. Especially if you're doing this at home. Rattle cans work great. All right, so that's literally clean. All of that, I soaked every part of that. Whew, my alcohol smells really, really strong. <laughs> Uh, but now I can literally just take my little pen blower, blow this whole thing down with a tack rag and spray adhesion promoter on it. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean this other piece to this bumper that's just down the booth. 
the exact same way with this alcohol-based cleaner. And then I'll turn the booth on and bring you guys back when I'm ready to spray adhesion promoter. And I'll show you exactly how you want to get that laid on here because that is the number one thing that's going to make the paint stick to this cover. Really quick side note, as soon as you clean this, you have roughly an hour to an hour and a half before you need to get adhesion promoter on that because all that's gonna happen is that mold release agent is going to seep to the surface. So clean it and within that hour to an hour and a half, get some adhesion promoter on it, seal it or base it, whatever you're going to do. If you wait longer than that, if you cleaned it the night before, re-clean it because more of that mold release agent is going to be on the surface. All right guys, so I've got this all cleaned up. This is a plastic adhesion promoter and it's just in a little Segola minigun. Uh, this is a 1.0 tip. I like to use a minigun just because it atomizes extremely fine. Um, but before I go and spray this onto this cover, I'm gonna show you one more step. If you're in a body shop, this is a pretty dang good investment. If you're a DIY at home, you could literally just hook up your blower, start tack ragging, spray this and you're good to go. For a body shop, it's really important that these jobs come out extremely clean. So I use what's called a static gun. And let me grab that and I'll show you what it is. Okay, so this right here, little focus, this is a static gun. Essentially, this is an air blower that blows uncharged air over this panel and it, it will remove the static off of this cover. And the benefits of that is any kind of dust or metallics or whatever's floating around in this booth will no longer be attracted to land on this cover. Plastic, fiberglass, they really just tend to build up a charge and that's why a lot of times if you're painting a plastic cover, they can get kind of dusty and they, you have to denib them and polish them. This kind of helps to eliminate or minimize the amount of polishing that you have to do on the back side of it. So basically how this works and how you use it, I'm going to tack rag this as usual. I'm gonna use this as a blow gun, get this all tack ragged, and then I'm just going to basically blow it all down with this static gun. Okay, so that's all tack reg. And like I said, you just basically act like you're painting it, okay? So you're just going to literally just blow it all down, like so. And that's it. That's ready to be adhesion promoted. I'm gonna go ahead and do the exact same process on this other part. Then I'll grab my little spray gun and I will show you how I apply adhesion promoter. All right guys, so I'm ready to apply my adhesion promoter. Um, and typically, I, like I said, I like to use a mini gun just because it atomizes so fine so I can get a nice, super even coat. Essentially what this product is going to do is soften this plastic and modify the surface so then when I spray my sealer onto this, it really bonds to this plastic so it doesn't go chipping off. So I'm gonna go ahead and get a nice even coat. First things first, all your edges. You wanna make sure that you get your edges nice and covered because uh, that's literally going to be the first place that this tries to peel off. Nice and straight up. Okay. Same thing within here. I'm going to do the inside of this first. And I'm just doing an even coat. I'm not, not pounding it on there. I don't need a lot of this. And then I'm going to basically just act like I'm painting it. Just getting a nice even coat of this on the entire cover. And make sure you get in every nook and cranny because uh, if you don't get adhesion promoter on it, it's not going to stick at all. Because that surface isn't going to be softened 
to it except that adhesion. And after you're done, once this flashes, you'll see that this cover is shiny. That's okay, that means that that, that plastic adhesion promoter is doing its job. So now I'm gonna let this dry for five to 10 minutes. Once it's good and flashed off, I'm ready to seal it. So I'm gonna go ahead, do this lower cover, and then give it its proper time, and we'll get in here and seal this stuff. All right guys, so that's good and flashed off now. Um, and I am going to use this between every step. I'll show you the second time, but between each coat, up until I get to clear coat, I'm going to do just a real quick pass with this static gun again. And just, it just reduces the amount of dust that lands on this. So I'm gonna go ahead, do one more pass, then I'll get sealer on it, and then I'll do it again before base coat, and then I'll do it again before I clear coat this. And I'll show you at the end, it does make a pretty big difference. All right, so now that that's done, I am ready for sealer. Um, if you're going to spray a raw plastic bumper, 10 out of 10, I recommend sealing it because sealer is going to be that, that impact protection. I know so many people that would go straight to base coat from here. Now, if this was any color other than black, you're gonna waste so much base coat to get it to cover over this black. Uh, sealer, Get you that ground color that you need to get coverage and use less base coat. Typically, sealer is going to be a lot cheaper than the base coat color. So keep that in mind if you're gonna do this at home. You can get epoxy, over reduce it and use that as a sealer or a ground shade. When you go to buy your base coat, ask the people at the counter, hey, what's the undershade that I need to be using? What color of sealer or epoxy should I spray on this cover or this panel? before I go to base coat. Because I promise you, you will save money and it's always a good idea because sealer, it's just that cushion coat. For us, it's really a cushion coat. This is a urethane sealer, but I also have a direct to metal epoxy based sealer that I can use on metal parts as well. So keep that in mind when you're doing this at home that you, you really should just seal it. If it's black and you don't care, it's not the end of the world to go to trade the base coat from here. But save yourself some, some money on base and just get, get the correct ground color sealer. So with this, I'm gonna spray at about 29 PSI. Um, I'm gonna just do a single wet coat on this entire cover. And as always, I'm gonna get these edges first. Open up my pen. I can't tell you guys how many times when I first started doing this, I missed edges. Oh, and it was so frustrating because then you're left to uh, try to figure out how to cut them in without respraying the entire job. That is super frustrating. So at this stage in the game, a lot of times I just do edges first. It saves me a lot of headaches. And I know it's really hard to see because this is black sealer going over a black raw bumper, but like I mentioned, oh geez, like I mentioned, this is just for impact protection. My stand is wiggling. There we go. And this bumper cover was so large that I had to uh, utilize this flexible tool stand because my bumper cover stand was too too narrow. That's actually the first time that I've had that happen. Usually my bumper stands can fit, but I kind of just rigged this up on here and it worked out really nice. Plus it's fitting how it would fit on the vehicle now, so it's really nice to have it just right in my face, you know? And it's not really crucial to seal in here i like to at least get a coat of sealer because a lot of this is covered but out of force of habit i just seal everything actually new bumpers have so many curves and angles to get All right, so that's a coat of sealer laid down. That laid down pretty smooth. I'm gonna let that dry. 
I'm gonna let this dry for uh, probably like 15 minutes because I still have to go mix up color and do all of that. So I'll let this dry 15 minutes. I'll bring you guys back and I'll show you the base coat stage. All right, guys. So my sealer is good and flashed off now. I mixed my base coat. Uh, today I'm gonna use my DeVilbis DV1. Uh, I've got a 1.4 loaded in this thing because it's pretty warm in here. Um, and then I'm going to also utilize my Luma Light, which this is just a spray gun attachment. Uh, allows me to really see my coverage as I'm going through and doing all of my edges. I'm going to do probably two coats and a control coat on all like this bumper and this other piece. And then we'll do what's called a control coat. So um, the control coat is really just to set the pearls and metallics down and even everything out. So I will just go ahead and get this in base coat. I am also using waterborne base coat. So two coats, it's gonna be good and covered and we'll be ready for clear. And as always, I'm going to do all of my edges first. Make sure they're good and covered because uh, you know the deal. I actually find that this DV1 with a 1.4 just fits how I like to spray things. It works really good with a 1.3 as well. I just, I really like to just spray pretty fast and get my coverage as quickly as I can. So, loaded with a 1.4, this thing just works absolutely the best for me. As you can see, my arm speed is pretty quick. Nice, tight, 75% overlap. And as far as the inside, I'm not worried about getting base where it's going to be covered. I'm just going to spray it along this edge here. Okay. And because this is waterborne base coat, really, you just want to spray it pretty wet. If this was solvent, I wouldn't be spraying it nearly as wet. All right, so that's my first coat of base coat. I'm gonna let this good and flash off. It'll go dull. With this paint line, I could do a whole nother coat right on top of this. I don't find that that's necessary. I kind of like to just let this start, start to dry before I go ahead and put another coat of base on it. So I'm gonna let this just kind of sit. I have some other stuff in the booth that I'm gonna go do, but I'm gonna get this other piece sprayed in base coat, and then I'll bring you guys back when I go for my second coat. All right guys, so I'm ready for coat number two. This is good and dry now. So as always, getting all my edges. Ah, I can't get over how many curves this thing has. These Luma lights, I'm telling you right now, if you've never tried one, they work excellent for being able to see in all of these really hard spots. I know it's hard to tell on camera, but uh, I've had Luma lights for, gosh, three years, I think, four years. And the first one I bought was for uh, my SADA 5000, and I used it a lot, so I bought one for my DeVilbis. And anytime I have a bumper like this, or a color that is really low hiding, or really transparent, I'll use a Lumalite, and it's just added security. So I'm not, uh, having to redo anything because I don't have my coverage on point, you know what I mean? And they are about to come out with uh, a new version of their spray gun attachment light. And I'm really, really excited for that because uh, they're gonna have Segola and Walcom attachments and I think even Fuji. Okay, so there's my second coat. And with that new one, you're going to be buying just, just the light and then each attachment set for whatever gun, but it's the same light. So anyway, um, 
second coat's on. Once this completely flashes off and dries, I will show you guys my control coat, and then we'll be ready for clear coat. Uh, this, this is pretty straightforward. The biggest thing when you're spraying these raw plastic bumpers, as I stated before, is adhesion promoter and cleaning them extremely well. Clean, clean, clean. You not only get a cleaner end result, the paint will stick. So follow those steps. You shouldn't have any problems. So I'm gonna let this dry. We'll control coat it and then I can go mix some clear coat. All right guys, so that coat, second coat of base coat is good and flash, dry it off. Now all we have to do is just control coat this. Um, my control coat, I'm basically just gonna focus on the face of this. And when you spray a control coat with waterborne base coat, you're gonna be back about a foot away from the panel and you're literally just laying pearls down. That's all I'm doing. So I'll show you what I mean. So foot back, foot, foot to a foot and a half. And it's just a pretty much a dusty soap. Just laying all of these pearls down on this bumper. Not real complicated. It's more important on uh, silver, things like that, where you have a ton of metallic. But it's good practice to just do it on every single job. So now that that's control coated, I need to wait 15 minutes for this to be fully dry and then I can clear coat it. Depending on what paint line you are using, when you go and buy paint, ask the store that you're buying it from to give you a TDS sheet, print it out for you. The TDS sheet, technical data sheet, is going to tell you a lot of information. It's going to give you the temperature range, your flash times, uh, mill thickness per app, like per coat of application, uh, things of that nature, and you need to follow those tech sheets. Even me being a professional and doing this in a professional body shop, tech sheets are your Bible. You need to follow them. So make sure you have those available and follow them. For this paint line, this waterborne paint line, I typically, I'll set, I'll use my watch, I'll set a 15 to 20 minute timer and I'm not clearing until that at least goes off. And then the trick is to take your thumb on a really inconspicuous spot, touch it and twist. If that base coat moves at all, it's not ready. If it doesn't do anything, it's ready for clear coat. So like I said, I'm gonna set my timer. I'm gonna walk away from this, go mix up some clear, do some other things in the shop. And then I'll bring you guys back when I'm ready for clear coat. All right guys, so now we're ready for clear. I have my clear coat mixed up here in the gun. Uh, as always, 4600 Titania Pro 1.2. I'm gonna do two coats, waiting about 10 to 15 minutes in between coats. So let's go ahead and get this knocked out. As always, edges all covered first. This is pretty straightforward. Um, as I stated with the base coat, you really want to uh, follow your flash times because if you don't and you get on your second coat too fast, you're going to have waterfalls. Let this stuff get good and sticky before you go and put your second coat on. I'm also using a pretty hot weather reducer. Um, I have my boots currently set to about 80 degrees. So hot reducer is good. It's going to let level out and flow better than something like a moderate. And that's really like temperature reducer. Those are pretty important to follow which one you want to use for what heat level. If you're just doing a single panel, I mean, uh, a moderate reducer would probably be okay for this. I could get on my second coat a little bit sooner, but I just like to use the slowest reducer possible given the temperatures that I'm spraying in. All right. So that's, that's the first coat on. Like I said, 15 to 20 minutes, let this tack up. 
And I spray my first coats wet just like my second. I spray it how I want it to look. So right now it looks like it's done, but I'm gonna do two coats so I have that film build. So I'll bring you back for the second one here in just a minute. All right guys, and that's all baked. Uh, this is completely dry to the touch now. Um, and I hope in this video you learned a thing or two about painting these raw plastic bumpers and hopefully you have a good amount of success in spraying these so you don't have peelers like I've fixed in the shop and I've done myself. Um, as I mentioned before, the biggest thing is make sure you clean these bumpers like crazy. Make sure they're good and clean you can go ahead and scuff them with gray scotch Brite. I would stick with gray simply because red can kind of fray this raw plastic, it's very soft. Um, so gray scotch Brite, Dawn dish soap, or you could even use Comet or a scuffing paste. That'll good and clean them. And then just follow the steps that I outlined in this video. Um, if you guys learned something or you like this kind of content, please let me know in the, the comment section. I'd really appreciate it. Um, I got a couple of really cool things coming in future videos that I'm excited to share with you guys. So stay tuned. If I earned a subscription, please feel free to hit that subscribe button. Um, and if there's anything I could do better, please, again, get in that comment section and let me know. Um, so until next time, thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next video.